Welcome to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska. Uh, we are continuing with part three of the Macedonian Question, a historical overview, an academic paper written by um, Ivanka Vasilevska, PhD, Associate Professor at the Cyril and Methodius University in the Republic of Macedonia. <clears throat> the last serious attempt for the resolving of the Macedonian Question happened in June 1908, when Great Britain made a radical turnover in its external policy with its efforts for giving autonomy to Macedonia. During the meeting between the British King Edward and the Russian Tsar Nicholas II in um, Reval on the 9th and 10th of June 1908, the British side offered a new solution for Macedonia which meant for this region to gain autonomous administration management. Also, a detailed plan was presented for its pacification. However, the outbreak of the Young Turks Revolution uh, stopped the realization of this project. Besides, the realization of this plan encountered the resistance of the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire and Germany. On the British-Russian meeting in Reval in 1908, uh, it was discussed uh, that uh, uh, there would be autonomy given to the last Turkish province on the Balkans, that is um, Macedonia. This secret meeting of the Russian Tsar with the English king has set in motion the reactionary streams in the Ottoman Empire which several months later in Salonika started the Young Turks riot. And um, <clears throat> this uh, historical moment will cause the crack between MRO or the Macedonian Revolutionary Organization and the Supreme Committee to become even deeper. Therefore, after the failed attempt to integrate the organization in the negotiations with the Young Turks, the Macedonian revolutionary Jane Sandanski will form the National Federative um, Party, which was set in the concept of forming of the Macedonian country or Macedonian state within the South Slavic or Eastern Federation. Already in the following year, in 1909, all the reformation activities or the reforms of the great powers on the terrain of ethnic Macedonia or the land of uh, Macedonia um, perished completely. In fact, on the stage stepped the Balkan countries which started the preparations for the expulsion of the Ottoman Empire and for the distribution of the Ottoman properties among themselves. With that, the Macedonian question was again suppressed in favor of the ambitions of the Balkan neighbors for expansion and territorial extension of their own state borders. We already concluded that with the Bucharest Peace, Peace Treaty was performed the dividing of the territory of ethnic Macedonia. In other words, Macedonia was divided with the Bucharest uh, Agreement uh, between the Balkan neighbors, Greece, Bulgaria, and Serbia. The results of this treaty or agreement contributed to the maneuvers of the positions of the Balkan countries before the beginning of the World War I, with which they built their own interests for connecting with the side which would enable the best chances for them to satisfy their national ambitions. The Macedonian revolutionary movement after the failing of the Reval project will find itself inside the whirlwind of the two Balkan wars and World War I. In this period, especially after the enactment of the Bucharest Peace uh, in 1913, the autochthonous Macedonian revolutionary movement will suffer a great defeat. Its uh, protagonists will pay with their own lives because of their dedication to the struggle for the creation of the Macedonian national state, or they will be completely pacified because of the heavy psychological traumas which they will suffer as a result 
uh, of the outcome from the events of the Balkan Wars. Because of all of that, the Macedonian revolutionary organization in this period will disappear almost completely. On the other hand, its place will be taken and filled by a completely changed version of the revolutionary organization, also known as Alexandrovist IMRO, which in this period will act in accordance with the needs of the Bulgarian court. The Macedonian question at the Varsais system 1919. The Versailles system, besides the signing of the peace pacts with the defeated countries, focused its work also to the setting of the relations in the newly created countries. It was necessary to be given guarantees for these basic human freedoms and rights of the ethnic groups, which uh, with the new geostrategic rearrangement, rearrangement fell within the new territorial borders. The general prevention required that a part of the main participants on the conference or at the conference um, to advocate in favor the minority issues. In addition to that, the British delegation by the end of April 1919 submitted a memorandum which accented the, necess the necessity of the newly formed countries to protect the minorities on their state's territories. Therefore, on the 1st of May, 1919, the Council of the Five brought the decision to form a committee in which entered the representatives of the United States of America, Great Britain, and France. The task of this committee was to discuss the international obligations of the new countries and to protect the rights of the minorities. After a series of negotiations between the allied countries, the High Council, uh, brought the decision to form the Committee for New Countries and Protection of the Minorities, or Commission de Nouveau Etat de Minorities, the French version of it. The committee started its work at the beginning of May 1919, and already on the 5th of May, the same year, was brought. Uh, the decision was made, uh, which um, the questions for protection of the minorities now covered the already formed national countries. From the aspect of the Balkan events, except for the kingdom of um, the Serbs, the Croats, um, and the Slovenians, which was a newly founded country, the already formed national countries, Bulgaria and Greece, were obliged to respect the protection of the minorities on, on their state territories. With this, the problem of protection of the minority gained uh, an international character. Under the same form was also included the discussion of the Macedonian question, and for it uh, to be placed on the agenda of the conference uh, was uh, exceptionally uh, a merit of the British delegation, says uh, the author of this academic paper. As Miller witnessed uh, to the Committee for New Countries discussed uh, about the ethnic minorities, which as a result of the Balkan Wars and the World War I, found themselves within territorial borders of the Kingdom of the Slovenians, Croats and the Serbs, and the Kingdom of Greece. On the 31st session of the committee, which was held on the 7th of July, 1919 in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, why say in the presence of the delegates of France, United States of America, Great Britain, Italy, and Japan, it was discussed, uh, the treaty was discussed with the kingdoms of the um, Slovenes, Croats, and the Serbs. And on this occasion, according to Miller's statement, it was agreed to discuss uh, only uh, about those minorities for which it was possible to suggest that they have a necessity of a special treatment. On this, uh, at this session, it was also discussed about the Macedonian question. Uh, in favor to it pleaded the Italian delegation, which suggested that it would be desirable to be asked for introduction of a special administration system in the Vardar uh, part or region of Macedonia. To this proposition decisively opposed was France, which was known to be a big supporter of the Serbian interests. 
On the 30th, at the 33rd session of the Committee for New Countries held on the 15th of July, the same year, 1919, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France, beside the observation of the treaty with, with the Kingdom of the Slovenes, Croats, and the Serbs, again, it was discussed um, uh, the, the proposal by the Italians to grant an autonomous state of the Vardar Macedonia. Uh, with this, the Italian delegate has pointed out to the importance of security, the necessary securing actually the necessary guarantees for protection of the inhabitants of Macedonia, and especially for the Slavic population, which is not Serbian. After the strategic tactics of the French delegate regarding this question, it was decided that a written notice would be sent to the delegation of the Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs, along with a copy from the minority clauses from the treaty with Poland, with a short explanation that they are an indication for the nature of the general clause with which the Serbian delegation was supposed to agree. At the same session, it was agreed that a letter with the same content be sent to the Greek delegates on the, at the conference as well. Already on at the 35th session with which presided the Committee for New Countries on the 18th of July, 1919, from the preamble of the treaty with the Kingdom of the uh, Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, the Macedonian people were omitted. Regarding the territory which belonged to the state's jurisdiction of the kingdom of the uh, Slovenes, Croats, and Serb was pointed out in Annex A, which uh, Bertha Lott, as a president of the Committee for New Countries and Protection of the Minorities, sent to the president of the Yugoslav delegation, Nikola Pašić, on the 19th of July, 1919, that without a doubt, it is necessary to be observed certain provisions which are referring to the rest of the ethnic minorities, such as Albanians, Macedonians, and in general sense, the Muslim population, which exists in the state of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. Regarding this, the committee would like to know the positions of the Yugoslav delegation regarding those minorities and their organization, as well as regarding the provisions which already exist or uh, which are in the process of observing by the Serbo-Croat Slovene government with which it is supposed to be secured, uh, secured the necessary freedom and protection of those minorities. In the Annex B brought on the 35th session from 18th of July, 1919, which Berthelot sent to the president of the Greek delegation in Paris, the Kingdom of Greece was obliged to prepare a draft treaty, which was necessary to be signed between the Entente and Greece regarding the rights of the minorities in Greece. Regarding Greece, the committee did not recognize a Macedonian um, minority within the Greek country. Therefore, the Macedonian ethnic population was not counted among the minority groups for which it was obliged to pay attention with the annex. At the same time with the events, Within the committee by the Macedonian movement translated in the temporary representative office of the former United Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization to the conference. Um, the conference uh, was sent the Archimadrid Paul Christoph, the general vicar of Thrace, who had a task to stand for opening of the Macedonian question. Um, uh, he, Mr. Christoph, Paul Christoph, on the 10th of April, 1919, sent the Memorandum for Autonomy of Macedonia to Georges Clemenceau and to Lloyd George. At the same time, he asked um, these uh, high representatives to be heard, aiming personally in the name of Macedonia and the Macedonian people to submit his demands. However, these efforts remained unfulfilled because of the lack of interest by the side of the high representatives or on part of the high representatives to hear out the Macedonian representative. 
Along with these events in the definitive, definitive draft treaty with the Kingdom of the Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, the Committee for New Countries presented an extensive report on the 29th of August, 1919. Regarding Macedonia, it was pointed out that no difference will be made between the old and the new provinces. Also in the same report, it was stated that um, the British and uh, Japanese delegation was given due importance of the statement within the documents with which the Kingdom of the Slovenes, the Croats and the Serbs in its constitution would proclaim the giving of local autonomy to Macedonia with which was specifically recommended it is not desirable to be imposed or to impose a special regime as it was demanded by the Italian delegation. Regarding this position, the French delegation was decisively against any kind of autonomous arrangement of Macedonia within the country of the uh, Slovene, Croats and Serbs because it considered that region is an object of the old dispute between the Bulgarians, Greeks, and Serbs. And such an arrangement could in, um, inflict the old rivalries among the Balkan countries and grow into another military clash between the same subjects. France considered that in Macedonia, a clearly defined nationality does not exist. And that the citizens were divided into parties according to which they changed their character as the new events came by. According to the findings of Miller, the Committee for New Countries on many occasions thought it was necessary to perform an investigation uh, whether in certain cases the use of the same special clauses was really necessary. The same necess necessity existed for the Macedonian people as well. Uh, regarding this point, there was no agreement among all the members of the delegations with an exception to the members of the French um, delegation. I beg your pardon, regarding this point, there was an agreement among all the members of the delegations with the exception to the members of the French delegation. In other words, the French didn't agree with the proposal. Regarding Bulgaria on the 36th uh, special session of the Committee for New Countries held on the 22nd of July, 1919 at the behest of the Council of Five, the treaty with Bulgaria was prepared. In the main instruction given by the council, it was instructed, and we quote, il est décidé, that's in French, uh, which I will not uh, continue any further. It's a very long sentence. Um, this recommendation was important because of its changes and additions made in the Article 3 and 6 of the treaty. With them, Bulgaria was obliged. Bulgaria accepts and declares that as a, uh, Bulgarian citizens, ipso facto and without any formalities, will become all the people which on the day of entrance into force of this treaty have a permanent residence on the Bulgarian territory and which uh, are not citizens of any other country. In addition to this, uh, also um, uh, the decision of the 56th uh, session of the committee uh, where it was uh, confirmed the decision of the Council of Five that the Pact with Bulgaria will not be signed unless it signs the treaty for the minorities first. The protection of the minorities in the Kingdom of Greece, the High Council also has assigned to compliance to the Committee of the New Countries. As a response to the above mentioned letter, which was sent to the Greek delegates, on the 19th of July, 1919, from the Greek representative Eleftherios Venizelos to the president of the committee, Philippe Bertelot, on 31st of July, 1919, was sent the memorandum for the rights of the minorities in Greece. In the submitted act to the commission, the Greek delegate Venizelos stated that the protection of the minorities was secured in the newly added territories as well because of which he did not experience the necessity of an official guarantee by the winning powers. However, he initially accepted um, to sign a general announcement with which Greece would be obliged to protect the minorities. Venezuelos stressed that um, uh, having in consideration the possibility in this treaty to be inserted clauses regarding certain racial minorities, which can be found in Greece, 
I submit to you the memorandum whose reading I hope will assure your committee that in Greece, not only the ethnic minorities enjoy the same rights, freedoms and protections as the majority does, but also have a very privileged treatment in certain affairs with special internal or international texts, he said. In the same letter, Venizelos claimed that the Greek government is firmly determined to expand the same regime in favor of the minorities uh, on the territories which are going to be annexed by Greece. For these reasons, uh, Venizelos was assuring Philippe Bethelot that they would not have any problem to a formal obligation before the international representatives in Versailles regarding this question. However, also, he was convincing uh, him that regarding the territories which uh, um, the Versailles decisions were included to the Kingdom of Greece, he said there will be serious inconveniences if in the planned clauses of the treaty uh, are entered provisions analogous to those which are found in Articles 8 and 9 from the treaty signed with Poland. According to Venizelos, these clauses, in fact, would not contribute with anything special regarding the rights which ethnic minorities in Greece apparently had, and they would only regard the endangerment of the loyalty of the ethnic minorities towards the Greek state. Therefore, Venizelos claimed that, quotation, these communities, as the Albanian groups, before the very doors of Athens, which today can use their own native language at home, while at the same time adopting perfectly to the legal order and who do not feel any need to create their own churches and schools. If the corresponding clauses be entered in a public treaty for certain, they will be exposed to uh, machinations of the foreign propaganda, he said. Regarding the Macedonian ethnic presence, uh, Venizelos wrote in the letter that, the same reasons I used are uh, fortiori to the Slavic communities in Macedonia, where the racial hatred is, is especially resurgent through the systemic propaganda organized and supported by the Bulgarians. In addition, the Greek systematic propaganda organized and uh, in addition, uh, the Greek representatives sent to the, uh, to the president of the committee for new countries and rights of the minorities, Philippe Bertolot, a memorandum for the rights of the minorities in Greece. In the memorandum, which was structurally divided into four parts, Venizelos suggested the setting of the following contractual clauses referring to the minority issues in the Kingdom of Greece. One, civilian and political equality. Two, religious freedom. Three, freedom of education and for the mountain Athos. Regarding the first clause of the memorandum, the Greeks stated that by the power of Article 3 of the Constitution, the Greeks are equal before the law and the same can be elected for every public functions. This provision, as it was written, was exercised over all Greek subjects, regardless of their race or religion. Further, in the memorandum was stated that the principle of complete civil and political equality confirmed with the Constitution finds its base in the conventional law of Greece. The London Protocol from 3rd of February 1830 is referring to the different religions. The treaty from 29th of March 1864, with which the Ionian Islands are annexed to Greece, envisions its use on these islands as well. The Treaty of Constantinople from 31st of May, 1881, Article 3, which is referring to the annexe of Thessaly and the Treaty of Athens from 1st of November, 1913, Article 11, Paragraph 2, which is referring to the annexation of Macedonia, Epirus and the islands, formally provide that the citizens of the territories annexed by Greece will enjoy complete civil and political rights as well as the original inhabitants. End of quote. As an example to this treatment of the minorities in the Kingdom of Greece, Venizelos in the memorandum points out, points out that regarding the certain minorities, this principle was used in a very privileged way. Uh, that was the case with the Jews from Salonika until the last war, which although completely enjoy all the civil and political rights, 
they were deprived uh, they were deprived of them not by the force of a formal act but simply by the demand of their supreme priest from every kind of military service and in the last war they were recruited in a very limited amount and even then only in the supporting services of the army also in the memorandum was stated that the same principle was used regarding the muslims regarding the freedom of education in the third part of the memorandum for the rights of the minorities in Greece was stated that the same principle was planned also in the article 16 of the constitution of the kingdom of Greece. Here it was highlighted that the practicing of this freedom was enabled to all citizens of the kingdom, even to the foreigners in the widest and most liberal sense. After the listing which followed in which were described the examples with the Jewish, Muslim, Catholic and Kuchovlakos schools at the end of this part, Venizelos pointed out that, quotation, the Albanians also can open special schools, but they have never taken that possibility into consideration because they have pure Hellenic feelings and they wish their children, even if they use the Albanian language at home, to have a pure Greek education. The same right is finally given to the Slavic communities in Macedonia, which also, before the union of this province with Greece, already had organized their own schools." End of quote. On the 28th of August, 1919, it was ordered that Greece take care of the educational process on the local level in order to, be, to implement the language of the minority of the population. Venizelos made a sharp reaction against this, after which the committee decisively demanded that this was necessary and that Greece um, uh, does this. After several months of negotiations with the Greek delegation, with the decision of the 3rd of November 1919, it was decided that the treaty with the Kingdom of Greece will be confirmed. Greece, despite the treaty for the minorities, succeeded to impose before the High Council its plan for reciprocal exchange of the population between itself and the Bulgarian Empire. To Greece, the native Slavic population was a burden, which the country did not identify as Macedonian, but it was in most numerous um, in the annex region of Aegean Macedonia, uh, ever since the time of the Bucharest Peace Treaty from 1913. Greece accomplished its intention before the committee to push its idea through which the country considered that the compactness of the Macedonian ethnic population will be shattered, uh, thus uh, paralyzing any possibility of a future annexation of the entire territory of ethnic Macedonia. In this regard, the committee formed a special subcommittee which presided especially for this question. As a main clause in the preparation of this treaty for voluntary exchange of population, it was projected that the immigration of the population from the seaside part of Macedonia, and that is the Aegean part of Macedonia, <clears throat> and Thrace in the Bulgarian Empire is to be performed by their own will uh, and freely in a time frame of four years from the day of entry into force of the treaty. The committee considered that the problem of the exchange of population should be extended to all the Balkan countries. It was agreed that the same clauses um, will be written in the treaty with Turkey as well, and the same also referred to the special treaties, treaties which were to be signed with Serbia and Greece. And thus, um, <clears throat> uh, a legal foundation was set over which the inhabitants of Serbia, Greece, Bulgaria, and Turkey could declare their desire to emigrate into any of these countries. Also, it was guaranteed that it was allowed to uh, it was allowed a choice of the country um, and the people could uh, decide uh, which country they wanted to live in. Uh, this will conclude part three of uh, an academic paper which we have been sharing with you uh, <clears throat> by Ivanka Vasilevska, PhD, Associate Professor from Cyril and Methodius University in Skopje Republic of Macedonia, titled The Macedonian Question, a historical overview. Thanks for listening. See you soon.